If you're looking for a detailed step-by-step -step instructional video on how to install Bloom undermount drawer slides, then this is the only video you need to watch. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jason Bent, and today I'm gonna teach you how to install Bloom undermount drawer slides. Here's my disclaimer. Disclaimer. This is only an example for the purposes of this video. No, this is not a standard size cabinet. Thank you from me. I have to make that very clear because everybody's gonna tell me that this is not the right size cabinet. It's a box to show you how to put another box inside of it. So let's get into it. We've got some undermount drawer slides. Uh, the reason that I just built this box this way is because not only are you gonna be able to see what's going on in the front and on the sides, but I'm actually gonna be able to show you some things on the back, which is really gonna make this a lot easier for people to understand. The slides that we're using are these Bloom undermount drawer slides. These are the 563H model. These one in particular are 15 inch. Uh, the cabinet itself I think is 16 inches deep. Uh, just so I can really give you a good view from every direction. So the first thing that's gonna make this process a lot easier is actually having the manual that shows you everything you need to know. The reason I wanted to share this is because if you contact Bloom, you can get manuals for their products. And today we're gonna be talking about the 563H, which is on this page here. And you can also reference all this material online. So everything you need to know is right here on this sheet of paper. And I'm gonna walk you through the steps so you can visualize everything better, but I will be referencing this book a lot because it gives me the information that we need. So with Bloom Undermount Drawer Slides, there are a few things uh, that we need to know. And I've actually marked these boards up really good to kind of help everybody understand exactly what we have to do step by step. And we're gonna talk about each one of these. And then once we get done talking about each one of the pieces, I'll quickly assemble this just using some brad nails uh, for the video, and then we'll go ahead and install it, and you can see just how easy it actually is. So the first thing that we need to know for Bloom Undermount Drawer Slides is going to be the width of our opening. And I'm gonna be putting the drawer in the bottom of this just because it's a lot easier to uh, work out, but we wanna get a measurement of the opening, okay? And so in this case, the opening is 16 inches or 412 millimeters. And I'm gonna be referring to both imperial and metric in this video. The same thing is in the book. The primary is metric, but there's also an imperial equivalent, but it doesn't matter which one you use, it's covered on this. So now I know 16 inches, 412 millimeters. Now what do I do with that number? So this is where we can go back to the book, right? And this is what I want you to pay attention to. So you have your opening width minus 42, that's 42 millimeters, or minus one and 21 30 seconds. And here's a really good example of why I like using metric. But either way, so let's go to our piece of wood and figure out what we do from here. Okay, so here is my front, here is my back. I'll talk about those here in just a minute. These two right here are my sides. I'll talk about the sides in just a minute. We've already established that the opening minus 42 millimeters or one and 21 30 second, my opening is 412 millimeters or 16 inches which means if I subtract 42 millimeters from 412, it gives me 370. Or one and 21 30 seconds from 16 gives me 14 and 11 30 seconds. What does all that mean? That means that my front piece must be that long. So now I have my measurement to cut my front and my back piece. Now let me show you why this measurement is important. If I put my drawer slides in the bottom of this cabinet, that distance that they're referring to is the distance needed to clear this edge and this edge. And when you cut your pieces, just to make sure that your measurements are correct, you can actually lay your slides down and take a look. And now I know I have the proper clearance. My boards are going to fit in here. This is where the sides come into play. If I want to test to make sure that the entire box itself is gonna fit, I can do so by taking the sides and ensuring that they're all going to fit. And I know that everything based on that is going to work 
just fine. And I would suggest doing this the first time you cut your first piece for the front or back. If you're using this drawer box construction, which is a very basic drawer box construction method, but this way you know that you've cut your piece the right size. What you don't want to do is cut your pieces the wrong size, make all your drawers, then go to put them in and find out that they don't fit. Ask me how I know. Okay, so the front's out of the way. Let's talk about the back. Well, the back is exactly the same size. However, there's an addition that you have to make for the back. And here in just a minute, I'll show you why you make that addition. And there's a couple other things that we're gonna do once I construct this box. So what so we're looking at now is the drawer back preparation. So I'm gonna talk you through all of these measurements and what all of these measurements mean and why. But again, it's in the book. So the distance for this back notch is a half inch from the bottom minimum or 13 millimeters. And if you look on the back of this, you'll notice it runs right into the bottom of the groove for the panel. That's important because this notch and the bottom of the box is what sits on the drawer slides. The distance from the edge to here is a minimum of 35 millimeters or an inch and three eighths. Can you go larger? Sure, you can. Do you wanna go smaller? No. So now let me show you on the drawer slides how this works. So back to our drawer slides and our demo. This is how the back of the drawer is going to sit on the slides. So just like this, notice if I was any shorter, it's not gonna fit. I have a little bit of play, but let's say I cut those notches only an inch and a half inch wide. Guess what? The box isn't gonna fit. Now I know a lot of people will wanna know, well, how do you cut these? There's many ways that you can do this. You can use a jigsaw, you can use the bandsaw, you can use the table saw with a single blade, with a dado stack, you can use a router table, you can use a domino. All you're doing is trying to remove this little chunk of material to be even with the groove. And to highlight again, this groove, note whether you're using a half inch, for the demonstration on this video, everything I'm using is half inch ply or 12 millimeter ply. This needs to be a half inch from the bottom. So if I use a quarter inch, it doesn't matter. If I use three quarters of an inch, this groove, the bottom of this groove has to be a half inch for these particular undermount drawer slides. We've covered the front, we've covered the back, now we cover the sides. The sides is super easy. The sides is determined by the drawer slide size. So I'm using 15 inch drawer slides, which is 381 millimeters. So the piece that I'm using front to back for the sides of my box is the same size as your drawer slide. And again, that can also be found in the book in this table down in the bottom. Like I said before, I'm just gonna pin nail this drawer together real quick just so we can complete the entire process and I can show you how everything works. Okay, so now it's time to do everything else that we need to get done for the drawer box itself. And then we're gonna focus on installing the slides. I circle these holes. These holes need to be drilled out to accept the locating pins on the slides. More importantly, or to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, we're referring to this pin right here because this will go in the back and there's some adjustments that can be made, but this has to actually sit inside of that hole. If you don't do those holes, this isn't gonna go all the way back. So how do we drill those holes out? Well, you can reference the exact location in the manual or you can get something like this. Bloom makes one, this one is from Rockler. This is specifically designed for undermount drawer slides. I'll leave a link to this down in the video description. They're all essentially the same thing. This works really well. And here's how it works. So it does two things, okay? We need to do these holes and we also need to pre-drill holes for these clips, which I'll talk about in a second. In order to do this, this rests on this lip and there on the bottom of the drawer. So it sits just like that. From there, you have your left side and you have your right side. So we're gonna drill that hole. We're gonna bring this over here, make sure it's all the way over to the side and we're gonna drill that hole. To drill that hole, the kit comes with this drill bit and a stop collar. And you just determine the thickness based on the material that you're using. We drill this hole and we're good to go. It's extremely easy. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so our holes are drilled. 
Now we're gonna turn the box so we're referencing the front. All right, so what are these? These are the clips that have adjustments. There's a couple different styles that you can get. Uh, ones that don't have this adjustment and ones that do, like these. This just gives you lateral adjustment left or right, uh, but these are also adjusted up and down. So there's a lot of very simple adjustments that you can make. The slides themselves also click into these, and this is how you can take the drawer on and off. Very, very simple design. So when you're setting these up, two things we need to be aware of. One, the orange goes in, right? Easiest way to remember it. You have to buy left clips and right clips, but the orange goes inward. These fit over in the corner just like this. But what we need to make sure that we do is we pre-drill some hole locations to assist in the assembly. Just like the other drill bit, the Rockler uh, jig comes with the drill bit for pre-drilling these. Now, this one works much the same, except now we're using the other two holes. This makes it very simple for you. Jig it, undermount drilling guide, and has an arrow. That arrow always goes into the corner. So you just put it into the corner, drill your hole, drill your other hole, flip this over, come down to the other side, drill your hole, drill your other hole, and you're good. Now, we're going to install our clips. It's just two screws in each one. And for those of you that are wondering, why is he taking all that time to screw it in by hand? Can't, why can't you use a drill? You can. Just make sure you have your clutch settings on the right setting so it doesn't strip it out. This drawer box is now done. We're gonna set this to the side. We're gonna get the slides installed. All right, so onto the drawer slides and installing them. Inevitably, I am going to get people who complain because I didn't show them how to do it with a face frame. This application that I'm showing you is for a frameless cabinet that would have an overlay drawer front. At the end of the video, I will briefly discuss how you could modify this with a face frame, how you could modify this if it was an inset. And I don't know if you noticed, but I'm kind of showing you how to do those things right now. So for the purposes of this video, frameless overlay, I'll talk about the rest at the end. So the first thing we need to do when we're installing these, for this specific application, we want the front edge to be three millimeters from the front. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One, the box itself is gonna protrude slightly past this, slightly, depending on the thickness of material that you're using. It's also going to allow for the drawer to be pulled in tight because these are uh, soft close, and it's actually gonna pull it back towards it to ensure uh, that you're good. So we're, we're installing these on the bottom, okay, just for ease of, of demonstration purposes. If you wanted to install these higher up, you could always put spacers and use that as your alignment. But the first thing we need to do Make sure that it's three millimeters. To do that, I'm just setting my uh, Polini pocket rule, whatever you have, three millimeters, eighth of an inch. I said I was gonna do both imperial and metric, right? And once I have that set, I know that that's where I need to do my pre-drilling. And to do this, I'm gonna pre-drill three hole locations, but I'm gonna start with one. I'm gonna do one in the, in the front, one in the center, and one back here, but I'm gonna do this one first just to make sure this one is set and it'll actually make the next two a lot easier. So before I do this, I actually wanna share with you guys a trick that I find installing drawer slides, especially pre-drilling my hole locations, a heck of a lot easier, and that is turning the cabinet on its side. I don't care what kind of drawer slide I'm doing, then that way I don't have to worry about gravity being an issue. Come up here to the front, I'm at three millimeters, I'm good to go. I can drill my first hole location. To drill these holes, I'm gonna use a self-centering bit. Personally, um, I like to use five millimeter Euro screws when I'm using these, or any drawer slides for that matter. However, I am out, so I'm gonna use the more common style screw. So I'm just gonna hold this in place. Okay, got my first hole drilled. I'm gonna go ahead and place my first screw in the hole just to keep everything nice and steady so I don't have to worry about it as much from this point forward. Okay, first screw is in, it's good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill my next two screw locations. Those two are done. I guess for this demonstration, I probably didn't need to do three. I could have just done one in the front and one in the back, but you know what? This is how I normally do it. All right, one side's done. I'm gonna flip it over, do the other side, and then we're gonna throw a box in there. Bring you over to this side so you guys can get a closer look at what I was doing before. Got my three millimeters, drill my hole. And 
insert my screw, screw that in. Again, you don't have to do this by hand, but with door slides, especially in melamine, even though this is an example, it's a good idea. I'll get the last two done. All right, drawer slides are installed. Knock everything else over in the shop. Moment of truth. We're gonna put the drawer box inside. This is the direction that it's gonna go in, this being the back, right? So we're gonna flip this over. And I really hope that this all works out or else I'm gonna look like I don't know what I'm doing, which does happen sometimes. All right, so this is one thing that I really like about the, the undermount drawer slides, right? So I put it in there, it's just sitting on it right now. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this back and I want you to listen for the clicks. That's it, it's done. It's in, soft close. Just like that. Undermount drawer slides are really easy. I don't ever want to switch back to anything else. I absolutely love the undermount drawer slides. And I'm so glad that I finally tried it. And once I screwed up a couple of times, um, I was able to figure out what I was doing wrong. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of different features about them. So before I had mentioned you have to drill those holes. Matter of fact, let's give you a better visual here. So right here we have this little point. This point is meant to go into this hole. So let's go ahead and get these lined up. I'll click this back on. Okay. So we're good. Now, the purpose of those is if I needed to raise the back of the cabinet for some reason, I can utilize this right here. If I can twist it with my awkward hand and I'm raising the cabinet up. That piece of metal that goes in there is basically allowing this, as I move this, it's gonna raise the back of the cabinet. And this is really helpful because sometimes you have to make certain adjustments for the reveal on your drawer fronts. So, that's a possibility. Anytime I install these, I always make sure they're completely down. Um, and it's very rare that I've ever had to adjust the rear. Um, typically I can get most of the adjustments done that I need in the front, but that's the back. And that's why I didn't put it back on this. So you guys could see the purpose of that. So now let's go over to the front. Now I know the lighting underneath the cabinet may not be the best, but it's okay. Pulling in on these orange pieces here, this is how I can remove it from the slides. And then I have a couple of different adjustments. There's a little gray tab here. If I push that in, it's gonna raise the front. Hopefully you can see it as it goes down. So if I need to go up, I can just push it back. It gives me the adjustment to go up or down, right? And that's the same on both sides. And then also these have adjustments, this wheel that I showed you, uh, you can buy them with or without. These are to allow you to move the drawer left and right to adjust anything you need to adjust. So there's a lot of adjustability built into these to where you don't have to take off the slides in order to do it. It's with the box on there, which makes it really nice. And then finally, I just wanted to show you, so when you're installing these, this protrudes past the edge of this about a millimeter. Now, if you use thicker material, like 5 8 inch, I always use half inch, it's really easy to figure everything out because it's pretty much just right at the edge of this, right? So now, imagine putting a drawer front on here, it's always going to have that, see how it wants to pull it back? It's gonna ensure that that keeps that drawer front tight uh, against the uh, face frame. Also, you may end up making some adjustments that shift it, right? So you have that little bit of adjustability. Um, again, this, is, this would be an application if I was putting a drawer front over it and it was gonna overlay over this. All right, so I did say I would address uh, some other ways that you could do this at the end of the video. So let's say that I wanted to have inset doors. Let's say these were edge banded and I wanted the doors to be flush with the front. Okay, in order to do that, exactly the same steps. The only difference is the front edge of this needs to be the thickness of the drawer front material from the edge. That's it. Same exact steps. This just gets slid back to account for the thickness of the drawer front. So what if you had a face frame? I'm going to, I'm going to show you kind of what you can do for that, right? There's a couple of different ways that you can do this. So let's pretend, obviously you want to make sure that the drawer slide itself is above the base. Okay. So maybe we're installing this higher up, so this wouldn't be an issue, but even if it was the bottom, right, we need to have something for this to rest on, not necessarily rest on, but to space it to clear this lip. Okay. So that's, this is just here as an example. 
if I was to put this on here like this, well, clearly my box isn't going to open because there's this is right here. So how do we combat that? That's where spacer blocks that you can put into your cabinet come into play. And you'd run this all the way to the back, and that's what you'd be attaching your drawer slide to. The, the thickness of this isn't exactly the same as this. That's why you see this little protrusion here. But for demonstration purposes, now if we wanted it to be an overlay, same thing applies. I'm going to do my three millimeter spacing here. I'm going to use this front hole and I'm going to drill that into the face frame. And then I'm going to use the, you know, the middle one in the center and the middle one in the back. That's how you can combat that. And that's how you would apply them to a face frame application. Now let's say I didn't want to go to all the trouble of adding spacers. What else can I do? Well, that's where you can get these clips here that actually are meant specifically for that. And these clips mount to the backing of your cabinet. And with these, you actually have some play because you'll notice this slides forward and backward. And it basically just goes in this channel just like this. Now, these are additional pieces that you would have to buy in order to do that. But if you didn't want to worry about spacers, you would attach it in the front and you would attach it to that clip in the back. Now, there are certain measurements that you have to keep into consideration. Your cabinet can only be so deep. And all of that stuff is, guess what? In that book, all of the measurements, it's extremely helpful. This is also an option. And you can just have it attached in the front and attach to that clip in the back. And it would basically sit just like this, to give you guys an example. This would be drilled up against the back. This is out in the front. As long as the cabinet depth is right, you're good to go. So that's how you can do different applications. So that is a detailed look at how you can install the Bloom undermount drawer slides. Again, the model that I use pretty much all the time is the 563H Bloom undermount drawer slide. They do have all kinds of other models. I would assume, I haven't done it myself, but I would assume that the installation of most of them is probably very similar. And if I did use something else and I was unsure, I would just reference the book or I would go online and reference the measurements. I understand that a lot of people are very hesitant to do this because it does seem a little bit intimidating, but I promise you, if you try it, you will find that you probably like installing these type of drawer slides a lot more. One other benefit that I really like to the undermount drawer slides is pre-drilling all of my hole locations before, and then that way when I actually assemble the cabinet, I can just bring it in, lay it down on its side, put all of my drawer slides in, and the cabinet box is done. So give it a try. I made this video because, to be honest with you, when I was searching, uh, for videos on how to do it. There's really not a lot out there, at least that I could find, that really give you a step-by-step -step and breakdown measurements and how you go about figuring out the measurements and all of that. So hopefully you found it helpful. Let me know in the comments section down below. If you guys have any other questions, please feel free to leave them down there as well. Or you can send them over to me on Instagram, at Ben's Woodworking. Uh, you could follow me there too. You'll get to see what I'm doing on a daily basis. That's gonna do it for this video. Until next time, get out in the shop, try something new, like undermount drawer slides, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.